a new day dawning. The amassed crowd chanted, Ja rule, leave lanes, Ja rule, leave lanes, echoed through the enclosure as the protesters competed with the blaring sound system. Uh, uh huh, you all motherfuckers ready or what? Is you all motherfuckers ready or what? I don't think you are, I don't think so. They continued on in its inflamed anthem of rage. On the raised platform, an enraged man strode back and forth, a spotlight's tight beam following as he paced, face dripping sweat, microphone in left hand, his upthrust arms rhythmically rising and falling in time with Jeffrey Atkins, it's murder, as he waited for the crowd's deafening chant to subside. As the decibels decreased, he screamed into his microphone demanding, what do we want? His question eliciting a response so nearly in unison that human ears heard a single roaring, Equality! When do we want it? He screamed back, Now! The primal scream of the crowd elongating the single syllable word into a four second throat grating visceral declaration of enough is enough! For over 2,000 years, our people have suffered! He yelled pausing just long enough to sweep his gaze across the amassed masses. First, under Rome and the tyranny that was Julius Caesar, and then under the heel of the Roman Catholic Church and its Holy Roman Empire. 450 years ago, Greg XIII codified our inequality so precisely that we leaplings are destined to be forever denied what every other human being has. What do we what? He continued, emphasizing each monosyllabic with staccato punctilious pronunciation until his seemingly top of his lungs over the top delivery rose even further on his final of four words. Birthdays! The crowd screeched vociferously. It is a sad circumstance, not of fate, but rather repression, that none of us will ever celebrate our golden birthdays. We cannot. We will never turn 29 on February 29th. First, we would have to have circled the sun 116 times before this could happen, a feat less than two dozen people have achieved, an age so unlikely as to be statistically impossible. The average human being has only to achieve the ripe old age of 5,479 days before celebrating a golden birthday, but we leaplings are condemned to the struggle through 42,369 days before we are gifted with what so many are handed. Our golden birthdays require eight times the patience and eight times the strength of the average man to receive the milestone and blessings handed to everyone else on this earth after no longer than a mere 11,323 days. What do we call that, he demanded. Tyranny, the crowd shouted in response. Tyranny, he repeated, tyranny. Tyranny of the majority over the minority. Aclocracy, mob rule. We will never reach our golden birthdays, not because the heavens have conspired against us, but rather because we, the 0.3%, are chained by the arbitrary rules of the 99.7%. The common folk not born on leap day who have chosen to discriminate against our kind. None of us will ever turn 29 on February 29th not just because of the advanced age necessary demanded of us to reach this seemingly mundane milestone, but because their calendar is literally rigged to make this celestial occurrence completely impossible. Leap years only come every four years, if that often, and 29 is not divisible by four. The system is rigged to repress us. We did not create an earth that fails to take precisely and exactly 365 and one fourth days to circumnavigate the sun as we pass through time and space on our 584 million mile elliptical solar system tripping, yet it is we who suffer. Lunar, solar, 12 month 10, when the ancients looked to the heavens and decreed that our calendar would hold 360 days and tied this to a 360 degree circle, they were wrong, but it is we who are forever wrong. The cosmos, as life would have it, really don't care about our desire to find symmetry any more than Julius Caesar and Greg XIII cared about the blatant discrimination we leaplings are heartlessly subjected to. In America, we pledge with liberty and justice for all, liberty and justice for all, my great aunt Patootie, 
on the day of my birth, February 29, 1996, the good old U.S. of A produced exactly 10,653 of us, 218 fewer than 10,871, born precisely 366 days prior, but of course, infinitely more than were born on that date in 1900, 1800, and 1700. Infinitely more because zero people were born on February 29th, 1900, 1800, and 1700 because there was no February 29th, 1900, 1800, or 1700. Century years are not leap years unless they are divisible by what? He enjoined. 400! The crowd screamed. 400! He screamed back. Four! Our nemesis! Our repressors are for themselves, but against us. There are those who declare we are a gifted people, to which I ask, gifted with what? The powers that be have codified and chiseled in stone how we will be shepherded from the flock, not just as black sheep, but as scapegoats. Was Ireland's Keogh family blessed when three succeeding generations were born on leap day? Was Peter Anthony blessed, or his son Eric, or granddaughter Bethany blessed, because three generations all had the mark of Cain emblazoned on them? No! No! Were Norwegians Heidi, Olaf, and Leif, Martin, and Erikson all blessed to have been born on leap days on three successive leap days beginning in 1960? No! The crowd screamed. No, indeed, and no, indeed. Cursed, not by birth, but by those who declare us unworthy. Those who gladly sacrifice us to the gods of caprice, gods who must be placated with their leap day offerings. No more, no more, no more, no more, the crowd screamed back. No more, the speaker declared, no more. We demand justice, we demand equality, we demand a new calendar. A calendar of righteousness, a calendar with seven months of 30 days and five months of 31. Gone will be the capricious nature of February with its 28 or 29 days. December and January shall have 30 days and February 31. The stone that was rejected shall be exalted. March and April will have 30 days and May shall have 31, the crowd screamed. And what of summer? What do we demand of it? Two months with 31. Two months with 31. June and August. Because if any season deserves one more day, it is summer, not winter. I know, he says, slowing his speak and speaking contritely. I know this places a burden on our siblings in the south, but it is for the greater good. I do not demean those south of the equator, but we that are nine-tenths of the world's population must take precedence over the one-tenth whose latitudes end in es para sud. Viva la raza, he says, thrusting a fist high overhead before continuing. September and October, 30 days. November, 31, the crowd declares, 31. And every leap year, we add a day in rotation to one of the months that usually hold 30 days. January, March, April, July, September, then October. Each season bearing the brunt of leap day. Gone are the days when we, the leap leans of February 29th, must bear the burden of a solar system that refuses to bow before our demands for symmetry, and a foolish and outmoded out deus dex, deus ex machina, deus view of reality. No more! Leap leans of the world unite. We have nothing to lose but our shame, he declared. The crowd bursting forth from the enclosure as they rushed into the streets to bring their protest to the masses.